Today I'm going to show you how to set up and configure a Bastion server. Now what is a Bastion server? A Bastion server or a Jump server is a server that is solely built for the purpose of jumping a connection, usually an SSH connection, to another server. Now why would we want to do that? The reason is quite simple. Security. Let me show you. So let's say that you have multiple servers in a cloud somewhere. You have your CSGO server, you have your DNS, you have your database, and you have your WordPress server. And all of these are running on completely different boxes. Now to access these servers, you can go ahead and open an SSH connection to each one of these servers individually. But then you will have to maintain the security of each one of these servers individually. For example, if you were to harden your configuration files, then you're going to have to update each one of these servers. If you were to change your private keys, then you're going to have to update each one of these servers. If a vulnerability was discovered, then you need to update each one of these servers. And also to audit the connection to these servers, you must audit each one of these servers individually. So you know what I'm getting at. When you have four different servers, it's maybe not that big of a deal, but when you have many, many different servers, then it gets harder and harder the more servers you have. So how do we solve this problem with Bastion server? We add a new SSH server, and then we create an internal private network to all these servers. So all of these are now connected together through the same private network. And this network is not open to the internet. Then we harden all of these servers by disabling SSH connections from the web. So now the only way you will be able to access these servers is through this one. And then we try to harden the security of this one as much as possible. So then you're only going to be making connections to this one and then jump your connection from this server to any of your other servers. So then you will only really need to worry about the security of one server and you don't really need to worry about the other ones that much. And not only that, but the best part is that you can audit all of your connections to these other servers through this one because all the connections have to be made through this one Bastion server. Now this will make even more sense on a home network. Let's say for example that you have your home network right there, you have a router which is connected to your computer, your NAS, your network storage, and your console. And let's say all these devices are protected by a firewall and connections are not allowed. Now, let's say that you're out somewhere and then you will want to access your network storage. You can go ahead and make a rule through your firewall to access your network storage from the internet. But then this will reduce your security. For example, if your network storage is not updated in time or if there is a vulnerability discovered in your network storage, then it's open to the internet. So anybody can access that network storage. So instead of doing that, we can add a Bastion server that is also in your home network. So then instead of directly connecting through your router to your network storage, you will have to connect first to the Bastion server, authenticate, and then make a connection back to the network storage. So then none of these devices are ever exposed to the public internet. It's only the Bastion server that is exposed to the public internet. This way you reduce your attack surface and maximize your security. All right, so now that you understand how it works from a top level, let's start configuring. There is many different ways you can configure a Bastion server or a Jump server. I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorite ways and then you can go ahead and get creative with your own implementation. So I have a server that is already up and running. So I'm gonna to connect to the root user at that server. So now we are in, I've already got the networking set up. So I have a file here named servers, and if I cut out this file, we'll see here three different private IP addresses. These are IP addresses for servers that are running in a private network that are connected to this server. Meaning, network-wise, the only way I can access an SSH connection to those servers is using the private IPs. And all the SSH connections in and out these servers are blocked via the internet. You can only do this via the private network. Now, ideally, the way you want to set up this is that you want to create a new user with limited access and then disable access to the root user. So then the only way you can really use that box is use it as a jump server. And if you need to maintain that jump server, then the only way you can access that jump server is by uh, the cloud console. So the first thing I'm gonna do on this server is I'm gonna make a new user. So I'm gonna run user add dash M to create a home directory. I'm gonna name the user jump, and then I'm gonna give it the bash shell. Then I'm gonna give this user a password. I'm going to type this again. One more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these servers that I have to that jump user. And then I'm going to give ownership of the servers file to that user. Now I'm going to switch to that user. So now we have the servers files in here. And this is the user that we would want to use to jump to one of these servers. So let's test our connections. Can we connect to these servers? And the connection works perfectly. So now the first thing that I want to do is I don't want to put in the password twice because when you connect to the jump server, you're going to have to give in your password. And then when you connect to the server that you want to jump into, then you're going to have to put in the password again. So to eliminate that, I'm just going to be using public keys. So I'm going to create new keys for this user. Done. 
and then I'm going to copy these public keys to those servers. So I'm going to use ssh-copy ID. I'm going to copy my ID to these servers. Run to the first one, then the second one, then the third one. Done. So now if I try to connect to any of these servers, I should be able to log in right away without having to put in my password each time. Lovely. So now that we got this configured, let's start configuring our SSH server on the jump server. So I'm going to go back to the root user and then I'm going to edit the SSH server config file. So I'm going to go to etsy ssh shd underscore config. In here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable root logins. So I'm going to search for permit root login. I'm going to uncomment that and then I'm going to change that to no. Then I'm going to go to the bottom of the file, make new lines, and then I'm going to type in match user and then the jump user. So this is going to be named literally jump. And all the rules I'm going to define here, they're only going to apply to the jump user. So for example, we can type in force command. What this does, it means every time you log into this user, this command will be forced to run. So this command can be, for example, sh space to root 172.17.0.2. I'm going to write this and I'm going to restart the SH server. Then I'm going to open a new tab. So now I'm back at my local machine. So now if I connect to the jump user at that demo server, it's going to ask me for the password for that jump user. And then it's going to throw me directly to the target server, completely bypassing this user. So if we go back to the configuration file, now one simple way of doing that, you can create a new user for each one of these servers. For example, you can make a jump user one, that's gonna take you to the server one, jump user two, that's gonna take you to the server two, and so on. The second way of doing that is hardening this user as much as possible and only allowing jump access from the client. So the server jump is gonna be initiated from the client. And this is quite simple to configure. Let me show you how that's done. So I'm gonna delete this line, and I'm gonna type in permit, TTY space no. This will disable terminal access. X11 forwarding space no. Permit tunnel space no. Getaway ports space no. And the fourth command will be user spin no login. I'm gonna save and exit. I'm gonna restart. Now let's see what happens. I'm gonna exit out of this. Now if I connect to the jump user and I'm gonna give it the password it will just not allow me to log in at all. So all sorts of access that users disabled. You cannot have terminal access, you cannot have tunnel access, and you cannot have forwarding access, and you cannot run any force command. So now that we have that user completely hardened, we can still use that user as a jump user. Now from the client side, all you're gonna type in is sh-j, and then I'm gonna go to the jump user, uh, the demo server, and from there I'm gonna jump to root at 172.17.0.3. I'm pressing enter, it's gonna ask me for the password for that jump user. And then what's gonna happen is it's gonna jump the entire connection back to you. Meaning if you have public key authentication between the jump user and the target server, it won't work. You're gonna need to set up public key authentication from your local host to that target server. So now my local client has to accept the fingerprint and then I'm gonna have to give the password from here. Now the third way of doing that is my favorite way of doing that is by using scripts. Let me show you how. Now in here, I have a couple of really simple bash scripts. So I'm gonna move these scripts from the root directory to that jump user directory. And I'm gonna let that user own those scripts. So now I can jump back to that user. In here we have a couple of basic scripts. So let me show you how that works. So if I launch the jump script, it's gonna give me a selection menu. So it's gonna say, please select the server. I can select the DNS server, the web server, or the storage. And if I put in the number for the server, it's gonna take me right to there. So nice and simple. So now what we can do is we can go back to our SH config. And in here, we can change our force command to run that script. So I'm gonna delete all of that. I'm gonna run home jump scripts the jump script. Now, one thing we're gonna have to change in here is that we're gonna have to allow TTY access. And the reason is, is because this script is interactive. So it requires TTY access in order to interact with the script. So now I'm gonna save and quit. And I'm gonna reset the server again. Now I'm gonna try to connect to that user. So I'm gonna stage to the jump user. I'm gonna give it the password. And now it's gonna take me directly to the script. 
So now if I try to exit the script, if I just press Control C, it's gonna just disconnect completely because the only command that I'm allowed to run is basically that script. So now if I start to connect again, it's gonna ask me what server again, and if I choose any of these servers, it's gonna take me right to the server, and I can do whatever work I need to do in here. And then once I'm done, I can just exit, and it's gonna exit all the way back to my client. So it's nice, safe, and secure. Now one more thing you could do is disable the force command for a moment, reset the server, and I'm gonna copy my keys to that user. So I don't have to put in the password each time. And now I'm gonna enable back the force command. So now if I connect to that user, I get prompted immediately for that menu. So now that you got this working, you can even harden it even further from here. For example, you can introduce passwords so that when you choose the server that you want to connect to, it's going to ask you for a new password. And I'll show you one of my favorite scripts. So instead of using this basic jump script, I'm going to use a custom dialog script, then reset the server again, and I'm going to connect to the server. And when I try to connect right away, I'm going to be presented with this dialog, and it's going to ask me for my multi-factor authentication code. So I'm going to type in that in. And once it authenticates, then it's going to ask me what server that I want to jump to. So I can select any of these, and then it will take me right to there. So that's really all there is to it. It's quite nice and simple. The idea of this video is to show you how it's done and how simple it is, and show you all these different kind of ways you can configure your authentication security, so we can go ahead and get really creative. If you would like to see how these scripts run and what's behind the scene, then please leave a comment. I'll make a video about that. With that being said, that's it for me. I'm going to peace out, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. See you.